The number one thing that every child needs to hear from their dad. Get that fucking trash out of your life. You have legacies to build. We grew that business from 3.4 million to 17.1. Horsepower, not horse shit. You want to be the parent that's an ally. They don't need another fucking friend. Not everybody's cup of whiskey. Toughest advice for the toughest businessmen. Be relentless. When I was growing up, I got into the entrepreneurial uh, game really young at the age of 12. I had the, I, I caught the dreamer's disease that my grandfather had. He ran a general store for 45 years. My father, entrepreneur since he was 15. My dad has had 70 plus years as an entrepreneur. And my brother and I, we caught the entrepreneurial bug very early in life. For me, age 12 with lemonade stands, uh, selling my mom's pots and pans at the end of the driveway on a Saturday morning without her being aware. My dad's proudest moment, my mom's most furious state. And I can think back to how many times in my life that being an entrepreneur, being a business owner like you have been, is the number of times that as a young man I wanted to stop that I wanted to quit. I wanted to just take my ball and go home and do something easier or something less difficult or maybe something safer. And this is where I think great parenting comes in, especially if your mom or your dad is an entrepreneur or a business owner. There were so many times in my life where I started up little businesses, whether it was a lemonade stand that didn't make as much money as I thought it would, uh, a tennis camp where nobody signed up. I had a couple of hockey schools that I, I started and I thought I would have hundreds of people signing up and I ended up with a, you know, a, a couple dozen, maybe 20, 25 players. Lots of ventures, my window washing company, um, being fired in professional hockey after two and a half years, having my my dream of coaching in the National Hockey League being de derailed at the age of 26. I went from a hotshot youngest coach in pro in minor pro hockey to fired all in 24 hours, and I can remember back on several of these occasions, as young as age 12 and as old as age 26, where my father said something to me that made all the difference in the world. And I believe that if we lived in a perfect world, which we don't, every father would communicate this to their son or daughter at some time in their lifetime, especially when they're young and they want to stop or they want to quit or they don't believe in themselves. I'm so many times growing up where I didn't believe in myself, where I didn't think it was possible. I wasn't sure if I could do it. And that's where a mom and her dad come in at the perfect moment. It's almost like an instinct. And I remember the time that I was really doubting myself about my hockey school and I was going to I was going to end up losing money after I put all this advertising out there and only 23 players signed up. And I was really down in the dumps. Like I was like a, I was in my first year of high school. I thought I was, you know, this this big shot starting up this this coaching uh program conditioning camp. I thought everybody would want to sign up for it. And it would be another step on me on my way to the National Hockey League to being someday this NHL coach. And I was good at what I did. Like I enjoyed coaching. I enjoyed teaching the fundamentals. I enjoyed coaching tennis and hockey. But nobody signed up for my camp. And I remember being really disillusioned that day. And my dad's a man of very few words. Like my dad has this quiet, quiet calmness and he, he's, he's a really poised guy. 
and it's it's it comes across as mental toughness he he rarely ever loses his temper never loses control um never you know never did we see very much temper anger just passion just passion but never anger and temperament and a real positive mindset and the thing that my dad said to me that time, and he said it a couple times, well, more than a couple times through my life that really made a difference in my world. And I think that every child on earth should hear that, that message from their dad. And you think about it and, and the impact that it could have. When I was down and I, and I was disillusioned about a couple of my little companies that I was starting up and it would have been so easy for me to quit or to give up and just, you know, go and, 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 and work a job and have a regular life. And my dad stopped me and he said to me, he said, son, he said, I have spent my lifetime sizing up other people. He had spent his, since he was 15 years old, he had run multiple companies. He didn't have any role models. He didn't have any parents or brothers or sisters that, that knew anything about business. He was abandoned at birth. He was adopted into a regular working class family. He didn't have any hands up or hands out or role models. So he says, so my dad says to me, he goes, I've spent a lifetime in business sizing up other people and I become very very good at it and he says I want to tell you something he says I look at you as a young man and I see somebody that's got the goods I see somebody who can make a difference in this world and who's going to go a long way and then my dad paused and he said he says, you have been blessed with a handful of gifts from God above. And he said, wouldn't it be a shame if any of those gifts went to waste? And I, I mean, I was, I, 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 it's just not something that we hear from most of our parents. Could you imagine if your dad had said something to that, to you like that at your lowest point? Could you imagine the difference that would make to young boys and girls in our society if a father put their arm around their son or daughter at a critical point in their development when they're 5, 10, 15, 18 years old and said, I, I know how to size up people and you've got the goods. You've got the goods. That to me is the game of fatherhood right there. Telling our children, proving to them, supporting them, loving them, not just saying it, not just saying it, but treating them with that integrity and respect, with that compassion, with the discipline, with the high standards that every day says to them, I believe you have the goods. And I believe that you're going to do something great in this world. I believe you're going to go a long way. God, I remember that. And that was, that was 40 years ago. And I can recite that passage to you as if it was written on my hand. I've been sizing up people all my life, son. And I'll tell you something. You've got the goods. And you're going to make a difference in this world and you're going to go a long way. And the good Lord above has blessed you with a handful of gifts. And wouldn't it be a shame if those went to waste? I didn't even know what the gifts were. I didn't know that I was, that I had any gifts. I was just down, down on myself my self-image, my self-worth, because I had failed. I had failed at this big, big thing that I thought I was going to win at. But I don't think there's anything more powerful my dad could have done for me. No speech, no motivation, no 
remember when or when I was a kid, I failed. None of that stuff. He just literally put his arm around me and said exactly what I needed to hear at that point in my life. You got the goods. And wouldn't it be a shame if you didn't maximize your God-given talents? I think about it all the time. I think about, you know, what, what that would mean to anybody to hear that as a young person, for your children to hear that, for my daughter to hear that. And I make it a point, it's my words, not my dad's words now, but I make it a point uh, when I drive my daughter to school from time to time, and I make it a point almost every time that I put her to bed, every second night after reading time, to tell her that I believe she's got the goods. And I tell Emery, I tell her, I say, you know, you're go who does daddy think is going to make a huge impact in this world and help other people? And she'll always answer me. I actually make her answer the question, who's going to make a massive impact in this world and help a ton of people? And she answers that every second night, me. And... I understand personally the impact that can have when a kid is at the crossroads or thinks they're at the crossroads. The world is coming to an end, but it really isn't. But we're too young, we're too naive and too immature to understand anything different. That's what my dad gave me and that's what, as far as I'm concerned as a father, I've been at this for 10 years now. Uh, I can't think of many things a father could say to a child that would be more valuable than telling them that they have the goods, that they have been blessed, that they have the potential to go a long, long way and help a lot of people, and that wouldn't it be a shame if your God-given gifts weren't maximized and used. So... That's what I believe every child needs to hear from their dad as we come up to Father's Day and celebrate fathers. We make all kinds of mistakes. We're very flawed people and nobody's perfect. No dad is perfect. Um, every dad needs a, a break from time to time. And it's hard. It's hard being a father in 2023. And there's a lot of children out there that are what I call underfathered. So if you were, if you were lucky enough or to have a, a, a father that, that showed up and, and built your family, and even if you had a father who sometimes the example was what not to do, I just think that we have to be grateful for any lessons we have learned. My dad always said growing up, he, says, he said, son, he said, we can learn from everybody. And I said, really? I mean, you can learn from your parents or your, 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 your brothers and sisters who were, had addiction issues and weren't mo He said, son, my dad says to this day, we can learn from everybody. Everybody can teach us something valuable. And it's a matter of listening to understand. It's a matter of hearing people. It's a matter of not just listening to reply, but listening to understand. He said, if you do that, there's something to learn. There's a valuable lesson to learn from every person that you come in contact with. If you'll listen to understand. If you'll really listen to hear what they're saying. And in my dad's case, he learned what not to do, which was incredibly valuable. The Earl Nightingale, look around what everybody else is doing and do the opposite. That's all he had. That's all he had was fear. He had fear. I don't know what I want, but I sure as hell don't want this. That's how my dad broke the chain, broke the cycle, and built the world of his dreams that now we live in. That's what it took. He had fear. He didn't have motivational speeches. He didn't have quotes. He didn't have a father who put his arm around him like me. He just had fear, scared shitless of living the same quiet desperation life. So he didn't. So he didn't. But I think that's fantastic advice as well. And we can learn something from everybody. So if your dad wasn't the best dude in the world, 
if you didn't grow up in the best, best home in, in, in the neighborhood, that's okay too. That's okay. You can use it as gasoline, use it as fuel, use it as a chip on the shoulder to drive you forward to be a better husband, to be a better father, to be a better entrepreneur, to be a better community guy, to be a better leader. Use it as fuel. We're not victims. There's no victims. There's only volunteers. My dad decided he wasn't going to be a he wasn't going to be a victim and he wasn't going to be a volunteer either. He decided that what he saw wasn't what he wanted and he decided to head the opposite way and the rest is history. We can learn from everybody we meet what to do and in some cases what not to do, but we can learn from everybody. And if you haven't told your children, whether they're young children or teenagers or even young adults, I know how important even my dad's encouragement is now. You know, it's just, we're in a tough, tough, it's a lonely, lonely life being an entrepreneur and a small business owner. We've chosen the loneliest road there is. And we understand that. You get that. I get that. I'm not complaining. This is what I've chosen. I wouldn't do it any other way. But God, it's nice to hear from our dads, even when we're teenagers or young adults and they, they say something like that, just to remind you, your mom and I believe you got the goods. And you know what? You, uh, you're you going to make a big difference in this world and you're going to help a lot of people. And all these incredible talents that the good Lord has given you, wouldn't it be a shame if they went to waste? Put that self-fulfilling prophecy on their shoulders. Put that mission on their shoulders. Don't be surprised if they fill those shoes. Don't be surprised if they fill that self-fulfilling prophecy. Don't let these special talents that you've been given go to waste. Make a difference, change the world, and say and serve others. If this message is something that anybody in your life needs to hear, they can sign up for my daily video emails, michaelmcclain.coach. michaelmcclain.coach. They put in their name and email, and every day I send them one of my kick-in-the-pants mental videos, michaelmcclain.coach. The doors are still open for a couple of days to my honey that makes a that brings in the money, email millions mastermind. Go to email millions.coach, email millions.coach, and sign up now before I slam the door shut in 48 hours. That's it. Make sure your children, no matter what age they are, are hearing those words at least, at least a couple times a year. That you believe in them. You love them, you support them, you respect them, and that you believe they have the goods to make a difference in this world. And remind them of all the blessings, the incredible abundance and wealth and opportunity that we live in today. Remind them that this is the greatest time in history to be alive. They don't hear that from anybody else. And wouldn't it be a shame if all our incredible blessings went to waste. Two words that change my life, two words that'll change your life. Be relentless.